In the previous part of this video, we started to code our weather app and we managed to make this really nice user interface. It contains a temperature and the location text and also a text field to search another city. We did the background as well using an image file from the assets of the project. It's okay that it looks nice, but I'm not really sure that right now it's zero degrees Celsius in San Francisco while the weather is clear. But what should we do? We could go to San Francisco to check what's the temperature right now, or we could ask somebody there, or we could use Google to find it out. But what if the user wants to know the temperature in another city? We probably should use a database that contains real-time data about a lot of cities around the world. Hopefully, I know something like this. So let's navigate to metaweather.com. There, click on API. Here you can find multiple methods what this API could do. First, there is a location search method. As we can see, the input is a query. In our app, the city what the user type into the text field, and it gives back some data. But what we need from this is Roy ID, meaning where on earth ID. And we need this because the next method of this API requires this exact data. And this location method gives back the data what we'd like to use, such as the temperature of the location. Let's start to code then. We need one function for each of the methods of the API. So let's start with the location search method and create a function called fetch search. What has a string input? For fetching data from the internet, we need to use HTTP Dart package. We can check it in the package library. For the installation, we need to copy this into the dependencies, then run a pub get. So let's copy this HTTP into the pubsec file and click pubget right here. Now we can import it in our main.dart file. Meanwhile, I started to create a search result variable in our new fetch search function. We can use http.get right here, but because of this is an asynchronous operation, we need to use this await. As the input of this get function, we need to have a URL where we want data from. For this, let's create a string search URL and make it equal with the location searches URL. But let's find out what is that exactly. At the API's website, you can find examples. If you click one of them, first you will see a huge and pretty ugly data set with a lot of different data. We will come back here in a second, but what we need right now is only the URL from the search bar without the query, which is, in my case is sun. So let's paste this into our newly made variable. Now we can use it as the input of the get function, but this URL by itself doesn't have any data. We need to have a query as well. So after this URL, we need to place the input of the fetch search function, where we will have the name of the city. Now let's navigate back to those ugly data, but now let's check the other example, which simulates a search for London. Here you can see all the data what this method has about London, but as we already discussed, we only need this where on earth ID. Okay, we have two errors right now. When we are using a weight, we need to do it in an asynchronous function. So let's put async here. As for the error with HTTP, we need to import the HTTP package as HTTP. So basically now the word HTTP will mean the whole package and in this way we can use the methods of the package. Next step is to cut the where on earth ID from this result variable. Now the result is the whole line what we see here. First we only need that part which is in between the curly brackets. For this, we need to use this json.decode function and we need to select only the zeroth element of this list, which is, in our case, is the only element, but with this we can get rid of the square brackets. For the json, we need to import a convert package. And then we can separate the data easily, so let's create a setState method and make the location equal with the title part of this result what we got and the void ID equals with the void ID part. Oops, but first we need to create this void ID variable. I want my start screen to have the weather data of San Francisco, so I initialize this int with the where on earth ID of San Francisco. 
And now we can start to create the other data fetching function. For this, again, we will need a URL. To get this, let's go to one of the location methods example and copy the URL from the search bar, but only the part without the where on earth ID. Now let's create a string called location API URL and paste the URL here. Then we should create a void fetch location function. Inside this we need to call http.get method as the same way we did earlier. Also, we can make a result variable to decode the result. As you can see, the structure of this data looks quite different than as we have seen in the other method. It only means we have to access the desired data in another way. So first let's get everything what's inside this consolidated feather. Then again, we got a list, so we need to take out the zeroth element. And now we can separate the other data easily. So let's call a set state and set the temperature to the temperature of this data. I think 9.155 would look too annoying, so let's just run it. Then let's create a string weather. We'd like to store the state of the weather because we want to change the background correspondingly to the state of the weather. So here we go, let's make it equal with the weather state part of the data. But we are not ready yet, because as we can see what the API gives back contains space and capital letters. And we want to use this data as the name of the image. And unfortunately we can't rename an image with a space in the name. Therefore, we need to form the data what we got from the API. First, let's replace all the spaces with nothing and make the data lowercase. And let's change the image down here to this better state. Alright, we are ready with those functions. Now we need to use them. First, let's create an unsubmitted property to the text field. Here we can call a function named on text field submitted. Basically, after the user typed in a city, the code will navigate to this function. But what does this function need to do? It only has to call the two functions with the API call, giving the requested city's name to the fetch search function. In this way, the fetch search function could give back data for different cities. And now we have enough code to actually try it out. At the beginning it still has a doubtful data about San Francisco, but we will sort it out. Don't care about this right now. But try to search for another city, for example London, then Miami and maybe Paris. And it works. Ok, it's still not perfect since I have to press enter multiple times to get the data, but as for now it's ok. So we did a pretty good API call, we have the data from the database, we can print it out on the screen and the background change works pretty cool as well. In the next part we will boost the user interface a little bit with adding an icon above the temperature text, what will change as the weather state changes. We will find a solution for the multiple enter pressing problem and we will also gonna make sure to solve that doubtful zero degree problem at the start. We will create an error message in case of a wrong search. And finally we will finish with a nice app icon to make sure our weather app looks professional.